Okay, so we are going to make a bowl. Um, the difference between a bowl and a cylinder on the wheel is a cylinder has a flat bottom and then sides that come up, even if they curve, even if they come in and out, you know, like mugs and bottles and vases and things. Um, and a bowl has a cur a continuous curve at the bottom. We are gonna create a bowl. I'm gonna first center the clay. I have a video on how to center clay um, and I'll link it below in the description. So I'm just gonna do this quickly so that we can move on to the steps of making our bowl. Okay, once your clay is centered, just like the cylinders, we're gonna open up. Um, you can use whatever method of opening up you prefer. You just wanna make sure you're getting that hole right in the middle. My preferred method is to cut my hands around the ball of clay and to stick both thumbs into the center. As soon as you start to feel any resistance or warmth or stickiness, add a little more water. And as you get more experienced, you'll know about how deep to make your hole. If you are not sure, um, if you've left too much clay or not enough clay down there, you can use your needle tool. Um, I like this needle tool because it's also a knife tool on the other end. Um, but I also know some people that don't like this because this also collapses and some people forget that. But anyway, um, you can check the depth by putting your needle tool straight in the middle of the hole all the way down to the wheel head or the bat and then put my finger into the bottom of the hole and with the same hand hold on to the needle tool and however much um, needle is sticking out beyond the point of my finger the end of my finger that's how much clay I have down there um, so if you're not sure how much clay you need I would say at least a quarter inch and it also depends on how much you're gonna trim. In bowls, I like to trim a uh, pretty deep foot into them, so I tend to leave a little bit more. This is probably about a half an inch. Um, if we were making a cylinder, this would be the step where I would spin the wheel, put my fingers in here, brace here, and pull across to create that flat bottom. But we don't want a flat bottom, We are creating a continuous curve for our bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling up the walls now. As always, my wheel is going counterclockwise. I have my left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside, and I'm working over here. Like if we think of this as a clock, I'm working at three o'clock. So get your clay wet. Connect your hands to make sure that your fingertips are aware of where each other are. And I'm gonna push the clay on the outside into my inner fingers. So I'm not making that hole any bigger, it's just big enough to get my fingers in there. And I'm gonna start squeezing the clay together. It's making kind of a, a rounded cone shape on the inside. And then when I get to the top, I gently let go. And I'm gonna squeeze this together and kind of press down to create a new lip on this pot. So I'm pushing all those pieces of clay together rather than have these folded pieces of clay. Um, and I'm gonna continue this process of pulling up the walls. And when I get to the top, gently let go, set the rim. So remember setting the rim is holding so I'm not really squeezing tightly um, to make it thinner. I'm just supporting this and pushing all this clay together um, into my squeezing fingers. And that helps 
strengthen the lip and um, re kind of reorganizes all of that clay. So I'm gonna keep pulling up my walls until I get as much of this outer clay up into the walls as possible, leaving this lip thicker because we might make this bowl significantly wider than it is now. So we wanna make sure there's enough clay here to stretch. So I'll wait until the end to really thin out my lip if it even needs it by the time we get our bowl form. I'm really pushing into the side bottom here to create a little divot for my fingers to be able to push the clay that's down near the wheel up into the walls of the bowl. Notice I continue to set my rim each time. When things start to get a little bigger, um, it's easier to add water to the inside and outside by putting some of your fingers on the inside, some on the outside, and just run water down your fingers and then it goes both inside and outside simultaneously. When it's small, I just tend to use the bucket directly. I think this is going to be my last pull. I have most of the clay that I can access up from the bottom near the wheel head and into the walls. My walls are pretty even and pretty thin. And I like to just clean up my wheel a little bit and get all that visual noise out of the way and get the water out of the inside. And before I start to shape my bowl, I'm just gonna take a quick look at it. It has a pretty good curve on the inside, although there's some adjustments that I'll wanna make. It has a little bit of like a divot in the side, um, but that'll get fixed up as I continue to shape it. And I'm going to use a rounded rib to shape my bowl. So I just made a bowl a few minutes ago. My rib's dirty. So I'm going to clean off the clay off of that rib. Add some water. And I'm going to start with the curve of my rib on the inside bottom of my bowl to continue to develop that continuous curve on the inside. And I'm pushing, I pushed down first and now I'm kind of pushing out to the side and my outside hand is just supporting it. So now I have a nice curve, but the, bo the bowl is still a little bit taller and skinnier than I want. So I'm now gonna use the rib on the outside of the bowl and my hand on the inside to continue to push out and create more of a rounded belly to this bowl. And don't forget to get the clay nice and wet and slippery. As things get thinner, 
and taller. You notice probably that I keep slowing down the wheel. Centering, you will have the wheel going fairly fast, maybe even at top speed. Pulling up your walls, you get a little bit slower. And then shaping, you get a little bit slower. And I think it's time to grease my wheel. It's a little squeaky. So continue to make sure that your curve is a nice continuous curve and continue to assess your form to see what you're liking, what you're not liking. And then when you feel pretty good about everything, I like to again just make sure everything is cleaned up Get the excess water out of the inside of my bowl and look. take a good look at everything. The inside of my bowl has a nice curve, but I sponged it out and this particular clay has a lot of sand in it. So I'm gonna just run my fingers over it to kind of push the sand back into the clay so that I have a smooth surface in there and it doesn't look all kind of sandpapery. Um, and then do one last little check of the lip. Some people use a chamois or a piece of plastic. Even you can cut a little piece of plastic to use on the lip to help it be nice and round. I feel like mine is fine. I'm not going to play with it more. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is use the end of my knife tool. Um, it can be a plastic one like this or a wooden one. And I'm going to use the point to get a little bit of the excess clay away from the bottom here. This is going to help me later when I'm trimming to just have a little bit less work to do. So I'm pointing it right at the excess clay, scraping all the way down to the wheel head, or in this case the bat. And I'm going to take my cutoff wire, wrap it tightly between my fingers, kind of like you're holding dental floss, and release the pot from the bat. And then remove the bat from the wheel. So if you do not have bats or you don't have enough bats to throw everything on bats, you can throw directly on the wheel head. You just have to um, cut it off, make a little puddle of water and slide it off. If you look at my cylinder video, you'll see um, that that's how I take the pots off in that particular video.